This episode of the Dan Lebitard Show is presented by Smirnoff. We do game days. Please drink responsibly. The Smirnoff Company, New York, New York. The bucket of death is somewhere here around the corner. We're all fearing it. Mike Ryan is muttering under his breath because he can't seem to miss with his days off this bucket of death. We're only doing it once a week because it had gotten too unruly. I somehow have not yet lost this season. Uh, How do you guys feel about a T-shirt get off your lawn after the Bob Costa segment? Um, Because Niche. Uh, yeah, probably, but get off your lawn is a ridiculously funny way for an old man to object <laughs> incorrectly to him shouting at you about things that people generally don't want from our show, but I will say, because I do believe this is a bit of a pressurized week that we're headed into, I just want people to know that when I talk to Bob Costas there or when we talk to Bob Woodward here a little bit later in the show, an esteemed journalist, that uh, whether you agree with what's happening around here or not, I presently live in an America in one respect that is unlike any America I've ever seen. And I know a lot of people will look at the racism in the present climate and just say, where you been, Dan? That's what America's always been. Fine. I'm not even talking about that. The America for me I've never seen before is what the hell do you mean mass deportation? Like the place where it is that we ended up getting in trouble with ESPN was on send her back chance. Like as an immigrant show, as the as in a city that's like built by exiles and foreigners. Like, what do you mean? Like mass deportation. Well, like, how are you going to go about doing that at uh, the Daily Show? I could tell you. Was uh, The Daily Show this past week was actually really, or the Monday that Jon Stewart did, was really Crushed informative uh, on that front. But you mentioned the merch, Dan. Yeah. And I have a funny merch story because we have this uh, shirt that's been really well received by Miami Hurricanes fans. Pro porn, Chris? Oh, no. uh, Angel knocked it out with uh, the design. It's uh, a quarterback doing the Heisman pose, but uh, mimicking the Zombieland celebration, which was invented by Western Kentucky. I'm not trying to take anything away from Western Kentucky. But I ran uh, into a couple people rocking this shirt at Hard Rock Stadium. And I sauntered over to them. I'm like, hey, guys, nice shirt. Where'd you get it? Thinking that they'd be like, hey, oh, it's Mike Ryan. Dude, well, of course we. They're like, hey, are you familiar with a Levitard show? I'm like, a little. He's like, yeah, well, they came out with a design. And my buddy and I, we bootlegged it. Uh, actually, we know somebody that works on it. Do you know Tony? He's my brother in law. <laughs> no. <laughs> so here's the story. Tony, so no. here's the story. Tony! Just, no, it's not my fault, Dan. It's not my fault. Let me, let me paint the picture for you. So my brother in law, Jesse. He's like a big brother to me. Love him. He's awesome. Okay. He's he's like the character of people. Jesse is that person, right? So it's not. I can back that claim up. It's not a character. Like that is the real thing. So he was sending that picture because somebody sent in our group chat of Angel's tweet. Like, hey, go out and get the shirt. It's a cool shirt. It's an awesome shirt. Jesse thought so too. Big Canes fan, obviously. So he's like, I'm gonna take this tweet and I'm gonna send it to another buddy of mine. And we can get these shirts. We can buy this from this link. Of yes, from the link, right? So there was, I guess, some bad reception for the guy's sake. Like he couldn't, he didn't get the picture. So Jesse screenshotted it and then sent it to him. So he sent the picture. I guess the the other buddy was like, "Oh, this is sick. Where'd you find this?" And he's like, "Oh no, this is part of a link. Whatever." So this guy, unbeknownst to Jesse, again, Jesse's innocent in this. Okay. <laughs> unbeknownst to Jesse, this guy takes the screenshot from the text. Sends it to a shirt maker. The shirt maker oh, then makes the shirt, come and then on. he rush sails it over to this guy's house. It costs him way more money to do it this way, by the way, than just buying from us. I think the the great part about it is what the zoomed in picture still is blurry because he had to zoom in to put it on a shirt. The, the so great, the great part about it is that you swung my opinion entirely. I now say your uh, our people deport them. <laughs> like because that's what we do how we cannot be trusted it? in this country around the commerce i cannot tell you how comedically perfect it was to run into two people that bootlegged our own design <laughs> and then for it to almost be immediately <laughs> revealed that they're related to tony and, and, i mean <laughs> tony it's that's why i pay for things or I don't pay for things dan i make things happen classic j-bone
It is uh, the again innocent. By the way, he was he was sending the link to buy because he knows that this is an established brand. He knows that he wants to put money in people's pockets. This way, it's a great shirt. That's what you do when you want to buy a shirt from a link. You just send the link to someone else. He he did, and then and then the other guy, not to name his name because he's the one that's actually the bootlegger, right? Not to name his name, but. He was the one that said, let me send it to another guy. And, and never asked Jesse, hey, where can we get the shirt? There's already, there's already a link. unbelievable. It's so Miami. And, of course, there's going to be a six degrees of Tony Kaladiud's family, right? Like Kevin Bacon in terms of where this there might be This was one stuff. degree. Yeah, this is not <laughs> very much I see, I'm going to see him today. One degree. Uh, I mean, why have you not been paying attention to the segment because you're buried in your laptop? Oh, sorry, Dan. I'm on Reddit. The show, I mean, we talked so much baseball and politics when are we going to do fun stuff again? You said Bob Woodward's coming on? Yes. What are we doing? It's Halloween. Stugatz was right. Where is he, by the way? Stugatz just texted me, actually, during Costas. I'll give you a little more Stugatz so that you can get really close to the action here because he was complaining from the other room about Costas. Uh, he writes me, Costas definitely turns the lights off on Halloween and pretends to not be home. And uh, show really fell off. Uh, we're gonna if the video audience right now is looking at Stugatz doing God Bless Football right now. He's doing the sausage, the sausage fingers, fingers, man. They're all, they're they're all the same size. Uh, he is wearing uh, the same. He laughed. Wow, same. he's laughing during <laughs> this. Huh. <laughs> God Bless Football going to be in Arizona soon. It does not often what? jump from city to city. What happened now? Oh, another show. Oh, my God. It's hard enough to keep track with the one. Bob Woodward is going to join us here in a little while. He's, uh, he is a legendary journalist. I want those so badly to still matter. Uh, can you guys give me that sound, please, uh, as I try to talk just a little more politics of Stephen A. Smith on with uh, Hannity? Because uh, the sports debate went on Fox television, and Stephen A. Smith just turned it into a sports debate. Number two, I know you're not talking about somebody being lucid and cogent and enunciating their thoughts with clarity, and you're bragging about Donald Trump. We can't be watching the same stuff oh, if I that's am. what you're doing. Oh, you're going to do that today. You know now, what? Lindsey Graham, hold it. Now, Senator Lindsey oh, Graham is about today. to come on this show. Let me tell you now, something. that man can articulate himself sat very with well. Him. Not Donald Trump now. I have... Okay, I have sat with him for hour after hour after hour, topic after topic after topic, and he is so dialed in. Uh, I, 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 he, really? Look, you know, it's funny. People try. This is like Can't the latest argument. Press conferences? And meanwhile, Stephen hit Stephen hit him with the, the his classic hand on the chin. Just finger listening. finger crawling up his face, looking at you, smirking sarcastically at what it is you're saying. For a man that is always in a suit, if I picture Stephen A, I'm thinking of him in a suit. He's got the tracksuit on late night. He's like, you know, <laughs> this was surprising. Thing. This was surprising to see him in the tracksuit yeah. for a cable news appearance. Why can't we have the same people on every day? Like, it's <laughs> so confusing. Who's in? Who's out? Uh, we're going to have Bob Woodward on. I wish he was on every day. I wish I was talking to Bob Woodward every single day. That's the every show. day. That's the show. That's you the want to talk to 80, Bob Woodward <laughs> every day. Eighty-one 81. year old Bob Woodward every day. I want to bring go your dad to, in. I want to go to his house and sit next to him and be like, "Yes, please tell me about Watergate and tell me what you think about the fact that we have a thousand of them every day now." <laughs> uh, let's go to the bucket of debt. Why do they even do this? I mean, no one even pays off the punishments or anything. Uh, let's go to the Jerwolf. It is reaching into the bucket of the of death, a very festive reaper today. I have the Washington Commanders, Dan. All right, so the Commanders are the on the road oh, at the Giants. They I are am four taking point that, Dan. Okay, on the road. They're Shout four out point the commies. Oh, his voice is like scratching nails against a chalkboard. Why does Jeremy have a mic? Uh, Mike Ryan, you go ahead and reach in and see what it is that you find. <laughs> uh, Carolina Panthers, uh, I don't I don't care. That's going back in. Oh, my in. God. I'm so sorry. They're at home, a seven-and-a-half point dog. To Spencer Rattler and them boys. <laughs> <laughs> the Saints! Uh, congratulations. Oh, oh my God. Spencer Rattler and them boys. I think, I think they're on their third quarterback, Jake Hayner. <laughs> That's a way. crazy spread for Spencer Rattler. Not Jake Hayner, I think. 
Uh, Here we go. Let's say some hill okay. Maybe some gadgets. Uh, I got the New York Jets tonight. Uh, the Jets tonight are a one and a half point favorite at home against the Texans. This Fuentes guy, where did he come from? I don't like him. Mystery crate, if you want more Fuentes in your life. Do you want the Jets? No, I'm going to put it back. I'm going to put it back. That's an interesting spread tonight. It was, but. It's all the injuries of the wide receivers for Houston. Do we, do we spam Tank Dell? Ooh, I've got the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, the Ravens play the Broncos this week. Are one of the few good picks in here. They're nine point favorite at home I, against the Broncos. If I may, Tony, you starting to see a little seeds with Bo Nix? I am. There's something there, Dano. No, come on, it's not man. on my top five. On, I left man. Bo Nix out of the top five, come but on, the jury was out on him during Tony's tears. All of a sudden, jury's getting together, looking around, saying. Some are looking at him, comparing him to Caleb Williams, like, who's my quarterback? Here? Kid's got something. So Lucy just gets to go on vacation every weekend and get drunk with people. That's content. Roy, what did you select from the helmet? I have the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, the Falcons have been playing well. They're at the top of the division. And do they have a bye no, this Dallas, week? No, they they're at home Dallas. against the Cowboys. They've got a three, they're a three-point favorite at home. I'm going to keep it. Good job, Roy. Roy's, Roy's put back a lot of winners, by the way. I've been keeping tabs on Roy's. Been put the, put the Minnesota Vikings back like three times. Put the Texans back a bunch. I was like, what three are we doing? Times. Roy's always subtle. Roy, how many times have you lost? Four times. Why haven't you paid any of the penalties yet? Because I'm never here. Oh, sounds uh, familiar. I mean, you're here right now. Uh, Chris Cody. It's Halloween. It's Halloween. And, uh, I mean, <laughs> Two right, birds, really? Roy. Let's, Two let's birds. think about that denial for a second, Roy. Because I'm never here. It's Halloween today. You're not dressed as anything. You owe four punishments. What I sense am, does that I'm, make? I'm, Get out of here. I am dressed. I'm dressed as somebody who doesn't give a shit Halloween. Broncos going costume. back in. I took Broncos at the Ravens. Roy. Yes. That you are a doesn't... Halloween failure. <laughs> You're you never are... here does not hold water. It's just shit. It's just it's shit. It, you owe four penalties. The Reddit is right. The, nobody pays their penalties. Why do they still do this? Two Chris. Birds. Two birds. I got the Cardinals. I'm keeping it. It's my second pick. All right. The Three Cardinals birds. are one and a half point favorite at home <laughs> against the Bears. Amin is going to reach in here and he's going to do. Uh, here, come over here, uh, Reaper. Let me go first because Amin's uh, very deep in the laptop here. Is it my turn or am I still uh, Golden Helmet of Life? I don't know. Nah, nah, you're up. You're up. Why do we keep platforming Samson? Okay, I got the Jets. The Jets are a one and a half point favorite against That's the a weird Texans. One. You know what? I'm going to keep it. Oh, whoa! Whoa! Wow! Wow! wow. It. Going down with the ship, huh? Uh, I just still got a little life in those eyes. This huh? thing again. Drinking cayenne water. Hasn't now. thrown a uh, 300 yard game since we were at the Clevelander. That's a good stat. The Dolphins for Amin. Uh, the Dolphins uh, at should, the Bills. Uh, that's should, going yeah, right that's back. At the Bills. That's unpleasant. It's going right a back. A six-point underdog. We haven't talked at all about that game. We haven't talked at all about the Manny Diaz revenge game. The Buccaneers. Uh, the Buccaneers are a Chiefs uh, at night. the Chiefs. They are an eight and a half point dog. Reaper, please come take these you know stinky what? helmets, uh, please. Uh, oh, he's taking I'm, off. I'm not a fan anymore. The, Get this thing the, out of here. The bucket of death. Uh, nobody's a fan of it anymore. Ugh. We really should be paying the penalties. Roy, rare has the excuse been worse than yours on Halloween day saying I'm never Stupid. here while owing four penalties. Like that, And in terms of epic bull rarely have we stumbled into it that way where you're just staring at me saying you're never here on the day everyone in the year everyone in the year associates with costumes and you owe four penalties and i'm staring at you and you're like i'm not here i forgot it was halloween sorry yeah it's just ridiculous like you, well, you have a daughter you know your daughter. Dan's Dan's got that excuse already. Already. what what a ridiculous excuse you forgot halloween we, we don't celebrate you at still that, knew sorry. it was halloween who like? else would forget halloween uh, wait a minute. Do you not celebrate Halloween for religious reasons? Yes. Oh, okay. There you go. I, I'm now just how do you learning feel? that. Bishop I, I nine, actually, huh? Religious persecution on the Levitar I, show. I was not expecting him to hit me in the face with a Bible. I am I was also not. very religious, and it forbids me from dressing up. Metal Lark Media sounds like an awful place to work. They look at religious persecution as kind of your center pillar. Dressing up is my religion. I really failed on Halloween uh, this year. I am no better than Roy yelling at Roy about not dressing up for Halloween because uh, the person who says I'm dressed up as a person who doesn't give a shit about Halloween, everyone hates that person.
Okay. That is not a good person. That's that's a Roy's life every day anyway. <laughs> that is that is a bad person. I want to for uh, our critics who will claim uh, that we are lazier than we've ever been because Pitch Clock will be a part of the show where you will get genuine baseball expertise if that's what you want instead of us just talking about 90s baseball players. Uh, a lot of you accuse us every time we do Gen CFB or something like that of being lazy. And I can just simply assure you that these particular people, and me included, have never worked harder in our lives. <laughs> like there is, there is no laziness going on when you run your own company. You've got to do all your own shit. Like there, You may think it seems lazy to Jeremy, hey, do a couple of segments, make it good. Can you? Uh, your voice is scratchy and the Redditors are complaining about you, uh, whatever, whatever they're complaining about. Whoa. Um, we, uh, we've got a baseball segment that is going to be stronger than what we'd be doing that would respect baseball and the World Series more than we would be doing it around here. And I'm just simply assuring the audience, I assure you, it is not laziness. There is no one around here being lazy with your show. I understand that all you want to show, 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 make it the show, make it what the show has always been. Pitch Clock is coming up, and it's different from the show. It's not as... Irreverent is this, but it has more expertise than the show is going to give you off of that World Series. When Amin comes in here today and he's like, he was ready to celebrate the Yankees winning. He was ready to be obnoxious New York. He doesn't even care about baseball. And instead, sport. instead, he comes in here today, stupid sport, baseball's over. Uh, the, the, we have not cared about a World Series like this one uh, in, in a few years, since maybe the Cubs were in the World I'm Series. I'm telling you, this little gauge that I have, bowling last night. I'm telling I bowled for three years now. I've never seen people, everyone was watching it. Everyone was living and dying. Like, it was the most, I, I at one point just looked around, and I was like, this is the most interest that I've seen with baseball anywhere. And it's all time. gone now. That's true. <laughs> Nobody cares but for that, But for the series, though, I'm telling you, people were into it. It might have been able to drag me back if it went seven. I was learning all sorts of great things. I'm like, who's this play-by-play guy? He's good. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> How do you feel about the fact that we are sandwiching this little bit of show between Bob Costas and Bob Woodward when people don't want? We got a 70-year-old Bob, and now we're bringing on an 81-year-old Bob uh, instead of talking about the World Series because I want to talk. Uh, I want people to know from a reporter who is uh, hugely credible at a time I think that should still matter. Uh, what Trump's feelings really are on the military. He's researched it, he's reported it, and he's written a book about it. Here's what I love, right? Bob Woodward. This is something that I learned in 2016. I thought there were certain things that were unalienable truths. Like if you say certain things like, oh, everyone stands on the same side of this. For instance, in 2016, I thought Nazis, clearly, were everyone's, we all get it, Nazis are bad people, right? And what I learned is like, oh, there's like people out there like, ah! doing that so bob woodward you're saying this i'm like yeah this guy's a legend you know watergate and 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 the all the president's men and all that i'm like this guy is a, a hero of uh, not american journalism of america right we all learned about him in school i'm gonna be interested in how many people say this old guy who the f is he i'm waiting for this reaction to what i thought was an unalienable truth that bob woodward is a great great american are there any uh, in a, inalienable truths anymore? Because uh, I, I think it's inalienable, or is it unalienable? Which is it? Uh, Tony? Inalienable. Mm. <laughs> Wait, you made it analable. You made it. You hey, made now it. you're talking. You made it. Uh -huh, there it is, ladies There's and gentlemen. Hey. There's the niche pro porn. I'm sure everybody <laughs> will be buying those t-shirts. Roy, earlier this week, we interviewed uh, Walt. Yeah. Uh, you're never here. <laughs> yeah, I never hear. Yeah. I talked to him about porn. You what? Yeah. You don't even watch our clips? <laughs> no. You think I watch this show when I'm at the house? Are you really? It really that low-key hurts my feelings. <laughs> it really isn't a family friendly show, if I might say. I don't look like my kids get in the car, I turn it off. <laughs> and you're, you're the one that just said two F I was gonna in the say last yeah, you're yeah, the yeah, biggest yeah, culprit. No, I because yeah. I know the deal. <laughs> I'm a it, fan of the show. Or I was. Or I, was, I, was were, a, yeah. I was a fan of the show. I threw it away, though. Does it mean anything to anyone in the audience, Bob Woodward? I'm, I'm... Like, this isn't like an age thing, right? This is like saying, oh, I don't know who Abraham Lincoln is. Like, this is, this is one of the great figures in American history, no? 
I mean, back when journalism investigations could topple a presidency that was corrupt, yeah, back when that was something that was a journalistic pride and the truth mattered, yeah, but we're kind of far removed from those days. But, Dan, this isn't something of the moment, right? This isn't something of, like, hey, do you remember where you were when Star Wars came out? Like, this is something that is taught in history classes. That's correct. This is... This is American history. It's brave journalism. It's hard to do the kind of journalism this man is associated with, and it's a dying commodity killed by the present times in a way that is wildly frustrating and heartbreaking to me, and I'm going to keep putting in front of you right until Tuesday so that you realize whether you like it or not uh, how much it matters to me. I really wanted to take your Manny Diaz bait during the bucket, but since Amin was cosplaying as a Redditor, I did not want to give that criticism life. I don't know if as a journalist he will find this awkward, but he isn't somebody who requires introduction, but I'm going to do it anyway. He is right now an associate editor at the Washington Post. He's worked there for more than half a century. He's got two Pulitzer Prizes that he shared, and his new book, War, is his 16th number one bestseller. On the back of the book, some of the praise that comes in may be the best reporter of all time, a great journalist of our time, one of the greatest explainers of how our government works, how our politics work, not the kind of government and politics that were taught about in high school or college and textbooks, but how they really work in reality. He is truth's gold standard, according to a former executive editor of the New York Times. Bob Woodward is with us. Thank you, Bob, for making the time. Thank you. Uh, The reason I wanted to have you on is because this is a thoroughly reported book by you, as always, and it is called War. Uh, Bob Woodward, as I told you, is an accomplished journalist, historical icon, really. Uh, This book, the reason I wanted to have you on is I just wanted to explain to people, because I don't understand it, Trump's seeming disdain for the military, as you've reported it. Can you explain to me why it is that a former president of the United States would seem what has what looks like to me from afar as disdain for the, the American military. Well, because uh, some of the leaders in the military, like General Milley, have denounced Trump and said he's the most dangerous person ever. This General Milley, one of the most respected people in the military in Washington, just says Donald Trump cannot be trusted, and uh, he, he speaks for lots of people, as we know. All the list of people who worked with Trump are now not only saying they're not supporting him, they're saying he shouldn't be on the ballot. What was the most surprising of your reporting as someone who I don't imagine gets surprised very often with as much as you've seen? Well, you know, the the surprise level is high in all of this. But the key is Trump is such a danger to the country. Uh, And, you know, Trump wants personal loyalty to him, not to the Constitution. But all of the people who serve in the military, serve in senior positions in the government, have to be loyal and wedded to the constitutional order. Trump is not. He disdains it. He, it's all personal. He wants to be in control of everything. And that's the danger. We have laws. We have the Constitution. We have historical tradition. Like when you lose an election, you acknowledge it. 2020, four years ago, Trump still will not acknowledge that he lost 60 court cases. Some of Trump's close associates, like Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, have said to Trump, you know, forget 2020. Uh, you're with all these people uh, who believe we didn't go to the moon or that I, I, and you are staring down reality look the the whole business of reporting we aspire to explaining reality 
people in government should explain and deal with reality. You can't be off in this fantasy land. And the idea that Trump has uh, somehow, he really won in 2020, it's absurd. No one, no one believes that, even his associates. But there he is clinging to this giant untruth. Your best pop, uh, pop uh, psychology theory, excuse me, uh, a little bit of, as you look at what is happening with Donald Trump, does he not understand service? Does he not understand sacrifice? How do you arrive at having an open disdain for people willing to die for the country? Uh, what, if he, he does not under Look, we have a constitutional order in this country, thank God. And as George Washington said, uh, the, the Constitution is an experiment. America is an experiment. And when you lose, you have to acknowledge that. And he has not. I mean, the things that Trump has done, he, he I'm sorry, I've got notes here because I believe in notes. Trump is a loner. He does not like advice. He doesn't want to hear from somebody else. Doesn't like the truth. You know, in this whole business about 2020 is absolutely contradicted by 60 court cases. His close associate, Lindsey Graham, the South Carolina uh, Republican senator, is tell, tells him, you know, walk away from this. It's not true. What I mean, the look, a we have a constitutional system. When you lose, you need to acknowledge it, and it's so sad. I mean, here Trump is running again, and. I think the year is 2024, right? Can't get away from 2020. I mean, it, he, he called his associate, Lindsey Graham, uh, after he'd done one rally, and he said, oh, Lindsey, it was great. I only brought up 2020 twice. 2020 is over. It's finished. The courts have said that. Trump associates have tried to bleed him of this illusion, and he will not. And the problem is, uh, he, Trump has got, I, I mean, I'm sorry to go to notes, because there's so much uh, information here. Uh, my newspaper, the Washington Post, has done amazing reporting to tell the world who Trump is, that he, Trump has got this idea that his instincts, that somehow his instincts can uh, drive the decision. And he summarily dismisses reality time and time again. Mm. Mr. Woodward, I'm curious what kind of feedback you've gotten from Trump's own generals. Yes, well, like General Milley, who's chairman of the Joint Chiefs, worked like that with Trump, has told me and is, uh, I've made this public from the book where Milley said to me, said Trump is the most dangerous person he, that Trump is a fascist to the core, cannot be trusted with the presidency. I mean, it's it's so vivid and clear. All of these people who worked with Trump have stepped away from him uh, completely. He's got look the the problem. Trump he just will say things. He has no plan, no order, and he has no team supporting him.
Millie's worried about being court-martialed. What do you expect the Trump revenge tour to look like if he uh, somehow wins this election in 10 days? Well, if, and if, I say I say 10 days just because I don't expect it to be done by Tuesday. Well, who knows what's going to happen? I mean, that's but what people need to look at, what are the consequences if Trump becomes president again? And what he has said to the generals, because if Trump becomes president next January 20th, he will have under law the power literally to recall retired military officers to service. And he has said, and I, I report in the book in detail, he has said, I am then going to take these generals who have been independent and denounced me, and I'm going to bring them back to duty, and I'm going to court-martial them. <laughs> I mean, a man, a, if a president has that authority, uh, there have been examples in history, but can you imagine Trump taking these respected generals who worked for him, who worked for the country, who worked for the principle of constitutional order, that he's going to actually try to court-martial them? That's what he's threatened to do. I, I think it's the weirdest thing is that he's probably been the most, or not probably, he has been the most openly disrespectful to the military uh, president that we've had in our history from calling POWs losers for getting caught, from saying I know better than the generals that were in Afghanistan and Iraq so I can get out of the situation. And for a guy who had never served, I mean, that makes it doubly disrespectful. However, this country, in this country, military people tend to lean towards the right in terms of, uh, in terms of politics. Are you surprised that we haven't gotten any sort of backlash or open defiance from people who would normally vote right but are insulted by some of the things he said? Well, all the people who worked with Trump, they, as I say, uh, have abandoned him and say Trump shouldn't be on the ballot. And one of the things that Trump, I report that Trump tried to use the military against the American people during the Black Lives Matter protests, just openly said, oh, I'm going to use them again. A president has uh, incredible authority. You can't use it for personal reasons to settle scores or vengeance. But see, that's the Trump style. It's all about vengeance if he doesn't like people. And uh, it is, I tell you, George Washington, the founding fathers would be turning over in their graves if they saw this. They saw a president who's going to use the law and the Constitution for personal revenge. Trump goes, he says it now regularly. He's going to, it's payback time if he becomes president. People, voters, need to really think about that. Do we want a system? Do we want the practice? If Trump is elected and becomes president, let's, let's call all these people who served honorably to the Constitution and law. Let's court-martial them. For what purpose? To settle a score because they have stood up to Trump. The name of the book is War. I have a lot more questions, but only time for two more. Uh, your reporting, and it's weird to me to see a thousand Watergates now, it seems like every week, disqualifying things. Your reporting and what you've seen and know to be fact of Trump's relationship with Putin, do you believe at any other time during your journalistic lifetime that that wouldn't have been disqualifying to any previous president that you have covered? Uh, it should be disqualifying. First of all, I mean, just last week, uh, Trump was asked about his relationship with Putin. And Trump said, well, I'm not going to 
talk about that. I will not answer that. But if I had contact with Putin, it would be smart. Now, what does the CIA director, Bill Burns, as I report in my book, Burns says, Putin manipulates, he's professionally trained to do that. Putin's, this is the CIA director. Putin's got a plan, just he, as he did when Trump was in office, at playing Trump. And that's, of course, what Putin's doing. Putin, look, let's understand who Putin is as the leader of Russia, which has attacked Ukraine. This is an effort to take territory. Look, Putin is the Hitler of our time. He just said, oh, this country. I mean, I lay it all out in the book. Putin's got this idea that Ukraine doesn't exist. Well, it does exist. So he's invaded just on this absolute fantasy that this country belongs to Russia. Well, the country doesn't belong to Russia. And, and thank God for President Biden, who has made sure that Ukraine has got support. Actually, the U.S. Congress, billions of dollars so Ukraine can defend itself. If Russia takes over Ukraine, what happens? I've talked to the president of Poland, President Duda, and if you look at the geography as President Duda must, you've got Russia and then you have Ukraine. If Ukraine falls, if Russia takes over, Duda says to me with pain in his voice, said, we're next. 315 mile border between Ukraine and Poland. And look at history. When Germany from the other side took Poland in 1939, now, as Duda points out, now we're going to get it from the other side. We're going to get it, uh, Russia and Ukraine. It is truly one of the most dangerous times. Now, things have been done. The Biden administration has been very aggressive and making sure and actually Two countries, Sweden and Finland, were brought into NATO. Very, very important because once you're in NATO, there is an agreement. An attack on one country is an attack on all. And the new NATO countries, Sweden, particularly Finland, a new 815 mile border with Russia. So if Russia goes, to attack Finland, they will have all of NATO and Europe and the United States by agreement, by uh, a, a treaty that, uh, that, look, NATO is probably the strongest alliance in world history. And of course, Putin doesn't like that. Very unhappy to see an expansion of NATO, but it has happened and uh, it's something to in the world of chaos we live in, it's something to take brief comfort in. Last question here for the legend, a real American icon, a historic figure, Hero. War is the name of the book and he is one of the Watergate reporters. Uh, you find yourself in the middle of the Washington Post as all around the Washington Post, a reported 8% of subscribers have canceled, hurting the journalists, not Jeff Bezos. And it's unclear how much your owner, Jeff Bezos, had to do with the Washington Post not, in, not making an endorsement this year. What is your most honest appraisal of someone who has cared about this business for a long time, cares about that newspaper, and finds himself... I love that newspaper. It's an important institution in this country. And the on the reporting news side, 
they have demonstrated and proven the threat of Trump. It's not some surmise. It is one of the most solid cases that has ever been assembled. And so now this idea that the editorial page uh, is not going to back up the reporters uh, is unacceptable and sad. Traditionally, go back to Watergate other times when the reporting has stood. Sometimes it's been very controversial and the editorial page and the owners get behind it and say we are one newspaper. Institutions like the Washington Post are strong when they hold their ground together. Yes, we have a news side and an editorial side, but the news side has proven case. You know, remember the old in geography QED because it's been demonstrated that Trump is this absolute threat and the editorial page should embrace that. And there's been some very vivid walking away from that. The editorial page of the Washington Post needs to deal with the reality of this threat. Bezos has interfered. Like, do you think we can say that flatly? Is that being reported? I don't know what is known as fact here. Well, he obviously uh, wrote his views on this as the owner. Uh, he's entitled to that. I know Jeff Bezos going back. And uh, like anyone in journalism or business, you have to deal with reality. And the reality is that Trump is this massive threat. We've proven it. Other news organizations have, have proven it. The New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, uh, television. And uh, for the editorial page uh, to take in any form the view, well, we've got some other view uh, there's one view because the case is so overwhelming. This, uh, the, the case is in just cannot be rationally disputed about Trump. Bob, the work for 50 plus years has been extraordinary. Thank you for sharing it with us, sir, and sharing your thoughts as well. Thank you. Hey, everybody, it's Mike Ryan, and I want to tell you about two of my favorite things football and Miller Lite. And when you combine the two, that makes for one heck of a Miller times. See, Miller Lite has great taste, but is also less filling. And football, well, it's just spectacular from start to finish. You put those two things together, you've already carved out a perfect day. Miller Lite keeps things simple with undebatable quality, great taste, and only 96 calories. It's a beer that strips away everything that you don't need and holds on to what matters most. A light beer that actually tastes like beer. Make your game time taste like Miller time. Tastes great and is less filling. Let it be both. To get Miller Lite delivered right to your door, visit MillerLite.com slash Dan. Or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories per 12 ounces. Fewer cows and carbs than premium regular beer.